Okay, this video tutorial is uh, to teach you a little bit about how to begin using Logger Pro as a video analysis tool. So the first thing we need to do is import a video. So I'm going to go up under the uh, insert menu up on the top of Logger Pro and right here what we want to do is we want to insert movie. So we want to click on movie and then navigate to where you've put the movie on your desktop or wherever you've downloaded to, maybe your downloads folder. And the one I'm looking at for this video is called Car Chase. And uh, all I have to do is simply hit open. And when I do that, it'll bring the video and it's going to insert it into Logger Pro. Now I've still got all my tools. The graph is behind my video. I've got a data set off to the side. What I have to set up is um, using some of my features for doing the video analysis. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner, uh, right here, this is what I click on to open my toolbar, which will be off to the right. I've also got a button here which helps me set my time base in my video and I've got the typical kind of play, stop, and uh, move forward frame by frame buttons that I have for video playing as well. That should be pretty familiar to you. What I need to do is tell a video what my scale is. Notice that there's a meter stick in the video. And if I come over here and I look at this fourth button down, this button says set scale. When I hover over it, it's the horizontal ruler. So I click on that and I drag across the object in the video that I know the length of. And in this case, I know the meter stick is uh, one meter long. So I can, uh, that's my easiest object. So I drag along that. Its default is set to one meter. And I can click OK. And now the video knows um, what the length of the scale is, all right, that we're going to, that we've just set. The other thing that I would need to do is uh, uh, navigate to a part of the movie where I want to begin taking my data. It's oftentimes not the first frame of the movie, so you have to scroll forward in the movie and find a good place that you would like to start taking the data at. Uh, I'm just going to keep moving forward here a little bit, and it turns out that about four seconds into the movie, we can see that both cars begin to move. So I'm just going to come to a place here where I can, let's say, see this first tire hubcap on this car. And I'm going to choose that to be the context where I'm going to start taking data for this car, okay? Um, but of course, like anything, we have to establish a frame of reference and an origin. So where do I do that? Well, this is where I'm going to be placing my first data point and where my time would like to start. So I come over here and I take a look at something that would make sense off to the right. And um, right here is where I can set my origin. This little button that looks like setting the graph axes. I click on that. And I would like to set my axes right at the tire. Uh, right in the middle here is what I'm going to do to set my origin. Okay, And I want that also to be my point zero at time t equals zero, but we're four seconds into the movie. So we have to tell the computer that we would like this time in the movie uh, to be our first zero's graph point. That's where we can come down to the lower right-hand corner again, and we can sync the movie to the graph. So we click this button, and we get this little window here. The movie time is 3.97 seconds. We really don't care what's happened before this, up to this time. So what we're going to do is put this, uh, this time in the movie is going to correspond to zero seconds on our graph, where our first data point is going to be. So once I've set that, I've synchronized the movie to my zero point on my graph, and I hit OK. Now I've set my frame of reference, I've set my origin, I've given the movie a scale, and I've let the movie know where I want my zero time to be. I'm ready to take data. The data taking feature is right under the select arrow here. It's this cross arrow where it says add points. Now once I click this, I have to be careful because any place I click on the movie will be seen as a data point. So I'm not going to click until I come to the tire here and I'll put my first data point at zero, zero. Now notice that the movie advanced. Uh, I don't have to put a click every frame. I'm just going to come forward a few frames. All right, I'll put another data point right at the center of the tire. Try that again, come forward, try it again, come forward, do it again, come forward. Now I could keep taking data. I've taken, let's say, five data points. I think you would know how to do more than that. Uh, you would just keep placing them along. What I'm ready to do now is take data for my second object. Well, I can't uh, just click on the second object. I'll have to tell the movie that I want to start taking points for the second object. I'm going to click back on my select so I don't make any mistakes by clicking out here. And I'm going to come back to the point in the movie where I put my first data point. 
Sometimes you have to click a little bit slower, otherwise you're going faster than a computer can maneuver, and you'll get kind of a, not an error message, but a different annoying window that comes up. So I'm going to come back to where I laid down that first data point right here, and this is where I'd also like to put a data point for my red car. So I come up under where it's pretty intuitive where I, I want to add a point series. And this is going to be the point series now for the red car. So when I do that, uh, now when I come to select data points or add data points, I'm ready to add a different set. So I can put one where that hubcap would be for the red car. Come forward a few frames. It doesn't have to be the same number of frames as we had for the blue car. I mean, we're just taking data. And position time data is position time data. That's where the object is at any time. So I'm just going to come forward and same thing, I'll put, let's say, five data points on this one. All right. So now what I'm going to do is come back here to my select arrow so that I don't make a mistake and put another data point out here. And I should be ready to take a look at my graph. I can click on my graph window in the background, and boy, this looks like there's a lot of information. And that's right, there's too much information. What I'm interested in for these cars is just the X direction. So when I click on my axis here and click more, I'm going to uncheck the things that I don't want to see so my graph isn't so busy. So I'm unchecking the Y's and I'm just going to leave the X's. I'm not going to, I don't want to graph the velocities or anything right now, so I'm going to keep those unchecked or if they are checked, uncheck those. Just plot the X versus time for each object and now you'll get a graph that looks pretty linear for both and it looks like they'll have a different slope. All right. Um, we're ready to analyze data. So now you've already learned how to do some data analysis on Logger Pro. I'm going to select my data points, okay? And I'm gonna choose to do a best fit line through this data, just so you can see how we do that again. And um, I would get a slope in my equation for each car, all right? So now I'd be able to talk about my slope, my y-intercept, I'd be able to write my model equation, and so on and so forth. If I'd like to see where these cars met in time, I could adjust my axes for the graph by double clicking on it. And I could manually scale my different axes. So for instance, maybe I want to take a look and uh, plot this out to a position of maybe five or maybe let's say four meters away. And maybe I'd like to take my my x-axis right here, and perhaps I'd like to also manually that scale so I could go out further in time, and perhaps I would like to go out to about maybe eight seconds and see what that looks like. Ah, now I can see that these equations are going to meet, and my cars would meet someplace in time out here, and I could examine that feature on my graph and come out here and see if I could make the equations predict Okay, what these values would be. Do my cars meet at that place at that time if I solve the two equations, for instance? So that's just a quick introduction to how you could use Logger Pro to model two linear equations and make some predictions about them in the video.